on the current year. Today we are uh, here uh, and we'll be conducting a webinar on cervical cancer and HPV vaccination. We have our speaker, Surgeon Commander Dr. Rajesh Bhalla, Vachan. Uh, he is with us. I welcome you, sir, to today's seminar. And uh, today's seminar is being coordinated by Bernard S.K. Patnai, Professor and Head Hospital Administration, AFMC Pune. I welcome you, Dr. Saroj, uh, to the webinar. Uh, I welcome the other BOE members. Uh, I can see uh, our program director also here, Dr. Rajiv, is there, Parmanans is there. And all other participants who have till now joined uh, here and there. Uh, but before we, I hand over to the uh, today's moderator, uh, Professor Head, Department of Hospital Administration. Friends, I have. Uh, uh, you must be knowing that you know uh, we lost uh, a very dear employee of AHA who is uh, you know close to heart. To each one of you, Mr. Deepak, his exit name was Arameshwar Rai, but we popularly known as Deepak Rai. He remained with us uh, since the inception of the uh, Academy of Hospital Administration and uh, joined AHA in 1990 and after almost serving for 32 years. Uh, and, uh, uh, then uh, he was unfortunately snatched uh, from us uh, by another disease. He was throughout uh, working during his, you know, uh, during his illness also. He he is actually he was actually a pillar of uh, THA. One of the strongest pillar of the HA, and uh, we lost him. Everybody is feeling so bad about him. And uh, I, I will request that uh, we start today's uh, with uh, one minute silence uh, to ensure that his soul and pray God that his soul is just at peace. And uh, I will request people to keep stand up for one minute. We all pray God for the departed souls and uh, may God give strength to the family to bear this job. Now I hand over uh, the session to the moderator of the session, Colonel S.K. Patnai, who is present in the department. Over to you, Thank you so much. Uh, very good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> Commander Bhula, sir, it's my singular privilege to be the moderator of this very important academic activity. That and what is important is the topic 
Sergeant Commander Balasar will be deliberating. Is a much important clinical, administrative, as well as health topic, and which is relevant to each of us. Before that, a quick introduction about Sergeant Commander Dr. Balasar. Firstly, I am humbled that and moderate assertion shared by a giant. Sir is a healthcare and hospital consultant who is based out of Delhi. He is an of patients and he commenced his career as a clinician long back in 1972 in Indian Navy. He has diverse experience in both in civil sector. After dressing into multiple private sector hospitals, he became Dean Academic and Professor of Public Administration of IAHMR. His area of important hospital and health management operational strategic roles that he has performed. In 2002, he assisted the consultation of Indian industry. In during, along with McKinsey and company, in preparation of report of healthcare in India, the road ahead, which finally became seminal document for the CII. He is one of the founder members of the Healthcare Committee of Sikkim 2006, and presently he is doing voluntary work as advisor, medical services in an NGO, Indian Cancer Society since 2006. May I now <laughs> Madam Bhalla sir, to start his deliberations, please. Sir, up to you. Thank you, Saroj. <coughs> Sorry, I'm calling you Saroj, but you see, I think I can take a little privilege. Uh, He's a little junior to me, so I can take the privilege of calling him by the first name. Matter of fact, we from the Navy prefer to call all our colleagues by the first name so that the bonding is much better. So, starting with that, can we start now? First slide, please. Okay, the first slide. Now, cervical cancer. Let me start. I will be repeating this again and again as the slides cross up is a massive killer among the ladies all over the world, especially in Asia, coming down, especially in India, coming down further, especially in the rural, rural, rural sector. So that is why this focus must come to everyone and they must understand. I'm sure they all understand, but they try to ignore it. And this common thing which goes is, ye mere ko ta ho sakta hai. Now, there are various reasons why we must discuss these two issues. Next slide, please. What is cancer? What causes cancer? Can it be diagnosed? What is the link between genetics as well as cancer? And last but not the least, can cancer be prevented? There are plenty of queries like this. We can go through each one of them. But in the next 30, 40 minutes, we can only touch the uh, the, the, the tip of the iceberg. Next, please. Cancer is a disease. It refers to any one of the large number of diseases characterized by the development of abnormal cells that divide uncontrollably and have the ability to infiltrate and destroy normal body tissue. Uh, can we have that in later discussion, please? Cancer often has the ability to spread throughout your body. It is also the second leading cause of death in the world. Next, please. Cancer develops when the body's normal control mechanism stops working. The old cells do not die, but instead grow out of control, forming new abnormal cells. These extra cells may form a mass of tissue called a tumor, which could be benign Potentially malignant or potentially malignant or even malignant. Next, please. So these are some of the signs only of what is cancer. There are many, many, many more. Just to give you a little update, change in the bowel habits 
all the urinary bladder habits. A sore which is inside the body or even outside the body which is not healing. Unusual bleeding or discharge taking place from any part of the body. Thickening or a lump in the breast again can be anywhere else. Example, most of us come across patients who have a lump or somewhere, some part of the body which is protruding out. We diagnose it as lipoma. The lipoma is usually benign, usually, but it could also be potentially malignant and become malignant later on. So likewise, we continue on indigestion or difficulty in swallowing. There, it points to the GI system and one has to see whether it's any other disease process or could it be a tumor somewhere setting in what we call as precancerous. Then comes the water mold. Most of us in some part of the body has a mold. A mold may be brown, may be black. A wart also could be warty in color, it could be fungal shaped, it could be flat. But the important thing is how much are the obvious changes? The obvious changes means sudden growth of the mold or the wart. Scratchiness, which on scratching starts bleeding. And then it has to be investigated further. Last, in this, in the among the, among the signs shown over here, is a nagging cough or hoarseness. It has to be investigated. Smokers will say, smelling very much is a smoker's throat. Agreed. But if the smoker's throat continues for months and years, it could be something more than that. Next, please. Now, this is a very, very important slide, and this is where we are focusing on the mainly on the Indian Cancer Society. Our focus in Indian Cancer Society, number one, is awareness creation, which I'm doing right now. Then we go in for screening, and after screening, we go for other activity, uh, other investigations wherever needed and necessary. Smoking and tobacco is one of the leading causes in India. Smoking, you ask some people who can come to me at the cancer center, and they say, my BD pita, second day pita. Tambaku khaata, tambaku thoda thoda khaa leta. Tobacco in any form, whether it's tobacco, khani, uh, you name it. Mm -hmm. All these, including vaping. The electronic cigarette, which is called vaping, that may or may not have tobacco. But certainly it has a lot of chemicals which do cause or could cause cancer. So coming back again to the which type of tobacco should be advocated to the people, answer is plain and simple, no tobacco. I'll spend a half a minute on this. A few years ago, we had this conference of uh, COP, conference of uh, people meeting over here in Greater Noida. And we advocated anti-tobacco anti move. There was a huge mocha outside. People from down south had come. They were the tobacco farmers. And they said, what happens to our livelihood? Now that is a question mark. So the government have to decide. You have permitted for the last couple of centuries for them to grow tobacco. And now one of you tell them that tobacco fields are to be burned now. What is the alternate they have? These are all food for thoughts. But as we are concerned, tobacco is a killer. Diet and physical activity. When you say diet, it's not only diet, it's nutrition. The earlier days, diet dietitian was called the dietitian. Now, with a little bit of extra thought processes, they are called nutritionists. These are again a very, very important entities. <laughs> Came a stage when they said egg had too much of yolk in it. So you shouldn't have it, it's very high cholesterol. Then came the movement saying that no, this is because some people in the West were trying to promote or put down the egg farming. So these also have got a political motivation behind it, but we have to look at it from the medical viewpoint. And physical activity, there is no getting away from it. That the more the so physical activity is done in an appropriate way, it can certainly prevent or assist in reducing the cancer. Sun rays, ultraviolet, 
uh, the tax will reduce it. I remember in the, when I was posted in Kashmir, we used to have a lot of skin cancers coming up or skin diseases coming up. Why? Because in those hilly areas, the radiation is much, much higher. The protection is very, very limited. Yet again, another, another example. When we come across patients, the doctor says, "Do you want to see my Now, what we mean by the swear is an X-ray. X-rays is got a very, very minimal dose of radiation, but if used unjudiciously, um, that also can cause cancer. That's the reason when they're pregnant ladies, we always advise them to go for ultrasonography rather than to go in for X-rays unless indicated by the uh, attending gynecologist. Viruses are resentic, it can cause cancer. One of them we will discuss today, one of the human papillomavirus. Next please. Now, who are the ones who are likely to get affected more among the genders? It's the so-called weaker section. They are no longer weaker, they are stronger than us. That's what my, my take is. Whether it's a mother, wife, daughter, or a sister. Next. So the well-being of a woman, who must look after a woman? In some of our countries, because a woman has to look after a man, but who will look after a woman? Who must care for the woman's health? She herself? But yes, we have to support her physically, emotionally, socially, and last but not the least, financially. Next, please. Now, in case of women, you have the reproductive health milestones. <coughs> Meraki, or the onset of menstruation. You all know this process. Childbirth, we have all come there after. Sorry, is there someone coming in between? Please mute yourself. Thank you. Then there are the hormonal situations which take place throughout a lady's life. And physical trauma on the body also is an affecting factor. Here we look into the genital infections, the breastfeeding and nutrition. These three factors we have to look after as to the women are concerned. Because there are two major cancers in the women, breast and cervical cancer. Now, I know everyone knows what's a cervical cancer. But <clears throat> I get some educated ladies, please pardon my word if I use the word educated ladies, Educated means they've done a fair amount of education. They think they know everything. Googling is the answer. Dr. Google looks after them very well. So some of them came to come to me to come to come at the cancer center. I asked them, I said, look, do you know where the cervix is placed? Believe you me. Hello. Can you mute yourself, please? Thank you very much. Some of them say, yes, I know where the cervix is. It's on behind my neck. It's on the, the vertebra in the neck. It's called the cervical vertebra. Now, you may think it's a joke. It's not a joke. It's a fact. It's not their fault. Because they have not been mentioned in the school or college anything about a cervix in the woman's body. So that's another very important aspect one has to look into when you're explaining it to College ladies or school children, that is the 11th and 12th one, whom we also target these days. Because they always start from that age. You start teaching them young, and chances are by the time they grow up, they will be certainly much more mature on the on their own bodies. Next, please. So these are some of the <coughs> data which I've got. And uh, this came from the ICMR National Cancer District to 2011. All the other ones have been updated. The figures are more or less, the percentages are more or less similar. Next, please. And the epidemiology, when you look at the growth can of 218 to 220, in the world, cancer is the fourth most common cancer. In India, it is the second most common cancer. When you come across 
to that on the low middle income countries it's again the second or second most common and in india the figures are here i won't spell them out you can all you can see them on the slide now if you notice that most of them in the world the cancer the breast cancer comes from the developing countries not the developed countries is it because the developed countries don't have a breast cancer of course they they can what happens is they have got certain screening systems which help to identify them early and our victim in indian cancer society is the detected early can be treated survival rate much much better in the world if you see the bottom line one woman of cervical cancer expires every 2 minutes in the world and approximately every 8 minutes in india which is shocking in nature next please now these are certain pictorials i have taken i'm sure or i think i hope i know most of most of you would have seen this this is where what a cervix looks like <coughs> when we see it through a speculum next please now this is again identification for some of the students next please this is going to be automatic okay take it forward so over here between the internal os and the external os that area is referred to as cervix inside the uh um, ladies of the women's reproductive organs next please now uh, this is the only cancer which can be prevented if detected in time and i mean it it can be as high as about 80 to 90% even high with 90 98% if it is detected in time and that's up to us to convey this message to the masses we are we we, we we see a particular set of slides and then we convey to the others and we forget about it but is it actually being controlled is it actually being contained next please there some like i like i mentioned in the beginning some repetition are take place idea is to deliver a point women need not repeat need not die of cervical cancer You see, today crossing a road in Delhi, most of them are very scared. Will they reach the other side of the road, or will they want to make it? But in this case, they need not die of cervical cancer if they are aware of it. Number one, number two, detected well in time. Next, please. Now, how is cervical cancer caused? Mainly due to an infection called. it's human papilloma virus human papilloma virus various varieties you know subsets and what have you some of the lifestyle factors are likely to likely to cause hpv virus persistent and untreated hpv infection now most of us especially not only the ladies even the gents we have contracted or will pick up certain human papilloma virus depending on which strain it is there are hundreds of strains in it the main one being four of them <clears throat> and if this these out of these four if they're not being treated then it's likely to lead to pre cancerous conditions mark the word pre cancerous so till the time they are detected i don't call them a patient i call them an individual till we can finally find out yes actually they are having a pre cancerous or a cancer state other causes are early marriage and early pregnancy government is coming down quite heavily on early marriages in one of the reading the newspaper the people the parents are being penalized for it that is again and demands to education education to the masses are not being provided the way it should be provided it's done in every house every family especially more in the rural areas multiple children early onset of sexual activity extremely important at the place where i am sitting <coughs> i have a, a ladies college close by <coughs> lady irwin college and when the ladies are going home they cross in front of my cancer detection center sometimes they just walk in these are all college ladies college i call them ladies they don't call them girls 
and they come and say, can we talk to you? And they start talking and they ask us, so is it okay to talk to you about sexual activities and HPV virus? I said, go ahead. I said, well, I'd rather that you come with at least two or three of your friends and sit in front of me. And if need be, if your parents are open minded, please get them along. So I'll give you an example of some of them. Some of them actually bring their parents over. I mean, explain to them, I've got a few booklets and some uh, uh, photographs. And explain all this to them. The parents, who like me, are a little elderly in age. They say, are you trying to tell our girls to become promiscuous, to have more sexual activity? I said, I never said that. Not for a moment I'm saying that. On the contrary, I say to the other multiple sex partners or having a roving partner is asking for trouble. Trouble by inviting a human papilloma virus which may come from a male person to a lady. You males carry, males are the carriers, unfortunately, because they don't have a cervix, they'll never have a cervical cancer. But they can certainly have penile warts. So they also have to be very careful about it. And last but not the least at all, is the poor genital hygiene. And that includes tampons, pads, <clears throat> washing. Uh, when I'm saying about pads, some of them reuse their pads after washing. I've actually come, come across in some villages, some of them are small. These are all <coughs> sorry, causes of poor genital hygiene. Next, please. So, what is human papilloma virus? You can call it as a, as a warty virus or a wart, which can take place on the on the labia of the women, labia of the you know, uh, just outside the, the vagina, or in case of men on the penis. Ninety-five percent sexually active people are in the sexually active people are infected with human papilloma virus at some stage of their life. If left untreated or undetected. It may turn into an invasive cervical cancer. There are hundred types of this virus. Some of them only may lead to cancer. Next, please. Now, what are the signs? Let me start with the last bottom one in yellow. Cervical cancer begins as a pale, painless condition with no symptoms at all. Is this true? Partially, yes. But in the earlier stages, it causes no pain, and that is why it's very essential to get a regular screening done. Now, there are certain processes of screening laid down, which we'll come to a little later. People can even <clears throat> ask a little later. But the later symptoms will be bleeding between regular menstrual periods. So, the period may be regular, but what is the reason for bleeding? It could be some other cause, but could also be precancerous. Bleeding after intercourse or even a pelvic examination by the doctor. Very heavy menstrual bleeding. Bleeding after menopause. Increased vaginal discharge or change in the color of vaginal discharge. Now we all know change in color of, color of vaginal discharge for many reasons. It could be fungal, it could be bacterial, it could be plain simple early pregnancy discharge. But one has to look into it. Then come the pelvic pain, and in some cases, pain during sexual intercourse, which again could be many causes, but one has to be careful that some of these symptoms are likely to take place. Next, please. So we come to the cervical cancer screening modalities. PAP test, everyone knows the PAP test or the cervical cytology. PAP is a shortened version of Dr. George Papinakalo, the doctor who had developed the screening test. So they're quite a few said, what's the PAP test or PAP test? This is what PAP test came from. VIA, visual inspection with acetic acid is simple, inexpensive test with moderate sensitivity and specificity only, only moderate. But what is the advantage of VIA? Being simple and inexpensive, you can train the ASHA workers, and other people in the field to carry this out. Yet again, those of you who would be doing it, sometimes when you're doing a visual inspection of acid, certain color changes take place on the cervix. 
and one does not have sufficient light to examine the cervix or is not glued up in it, then you may miss out. But even then, something is better than nothing. Then we come to co testing or combined testing. The combined procedure, this is what we are planning following nowadays in the Indian Cancer Society. That is an HPV test and a pap smear. HPV is HPV DNA. It's a little expensive and it's unfortunate again <coughs> that the government, central government or state governments do not take this seriously because it's an expensive test and they said if you can make, you can make it with BIA, why should you bother to go for uh, APB DNA or go for what pap test? Even pap test, for that you require certain cost is involved in that because the sample that to be sent across to a laboratory where proper screening is carried out. Pre-HPV testing, also called, it's the actual thing is primary HPV testing, screening is a way of testing the sample of cells taken at the cell screening survival. <coughs> survival screening. Beautiful instrument. Again, two things involved. The, the corpus go the earlier version and they keep on getting updated. And corpus scopes, like all scopes, are expensive. B, the lady or the gynecologist or the ASHA worker or the doctors, they have to understand how to use the corpus scope and then interpret it. Like that, plenty of new modalities are coming. Very often, as companies come to me, and this says, try this out, try this out, try this out. My answer to them is, if you've already does, done this in some other part of the world or some other part in India, give, let me see the results and then we'll consider it. There's no sense of trial, then the trial. The under trial is not good enough for us because we don't want to take our ladies, if I may use the wrong word, as guinea pig testing. No way. We'd rather have confirmed modalities where we can go in for these cervical cancer screening. Next, please. So, what's a pap smear test? It's very, very simple, primarily for those who are not aware of it. The lady lies down on the back, spreads the legs, and the speculum is passed inside. Speculums are of different types. They are the metallic ones, they are the disposable ones, they are the plastic ones, they are ones with the screw holding. Various types of uh, speculum are there. This is gently inserted into the vagina, the vagina to hold the all the part and give a clear view of the cervix. Now, get a clear, clear view of the cervix is important. When I go to camps, when my team goes to the camps to do it, they give us a small bench and say, it's for our kind of. But there's no light there. How does a gynecologist or a doctor perceive the cervix if he cannot have sufficient light or he gets a wrong impression? Anyway, let's assume all the well. After that, there's a cytopress, breath, or a spatula which is used to collect the samples from the cervix, surface of the surface. Now, it uh, sounds very, very simple. But, my dears, remember, cervix need not be straight looking at you. It could be antiverted, retroverted. The so various things can take place. And only person who is glued up in doing the pap smear can get a genuine mucus from the right place. And the mucus has to come around your cervix, on the, on the wall of the cervix, or just around the vagina, vaginal wall of the cervix. Next, please. All women after the age of 25 should have a cervical screening test done every day, unless they are not married. In other words, we are not interested to have medical legal cases wherein the hymen has been broken during examination. So that can create problem for her future marriage. But infrequent screening is more dangerous than no screening at all. It gives a false sense of security. Coming to the thing which I'm repeating again, it can be done by VIA methods. Let's say we have an infection with the acetic acid or with liquid IOD, which also is an older technique for known as VILI. And currently, most of the places we do the PAP test or the PAP square test. We in the Indian Cancer Society do free screening every November at the PAP test in Delhi. How many ever people come, whether at the camp or at my cancer detection center? 
the human papilloma DNA tests are available on a request for extra payment because that <coughs> involves taking sample in the same way but putting it in a tube and sending it across, sending it across to the uh, laboratory and we get the results very fast within 24 to 48 hours. I won't, I won't name the laboratories who have tied up with us but let me tell you the results come pretty fast. Next please. Cap smear is a very, very painless procedure. You will come across when you're holding caps in your colonies or elsewhere. The question which I asked is, how painful is it? Actually, if done properly, it's a painless test and it will only take about one minute of your time. But the precancerous changes can be detected up to five years in advance sometimes. Not always, depending on which virus is involved in it. The two types of uh, virus which are responsible for the cervical cancer in the 70% of the cases, you know, like HPV type 16 and 18. There are two more, and like there are multiple more, but these are the main ones which we focus on. And HPV DNA, these are the two tests, the two types of uh, a particular strain we look for in HPV DNA. If a woman <laughs> from the age of 18 to 70, the life expectancy expectancy is now gone up to 70, 80. So that is why we moved earlier, it was to 50, 60, 70. And now we're going even beyond. Or within two years of becoming sexually active. If they get the pap smear done, more than 90% of the cervical cancer can be prevented. Why? You can find them in time, you can treat them in time. Otherwise, well, we are leave that as question mark. Now, most menopausal women, some who undergo hysterectomy, pregnant ladies, lesbian women, and heterosexual men, women who have been sexually active. The last few lines, <clears throat> whenever I mention this to a little senior crowd, senior age wise, and as, as young as me, this was 70 plus, they get a little taken aback. So, how can you talk about people like that? about lesbian women, heterosexual women, now men, or women who are sexually active, having multiple partners. But these are the facts of life. How, how much can we shy away from it? And if it is so, this, this is one particular thing we have to be really very careful. So when we're taking a history, not to say that they'll reveal it, but there's no harm in asking because that makes it much easier for the doctor who's examining to come to a conclusion. Next, please. In the pap smear test, what you're looking for is dysplasia or abnormal cell growth. It could be plain, simple inflammation or irritation which can be treated. Or it could be an infection which after necessary tests can also be treated. However, our focus here is on human papillomavirus infection. There could be some sexually transmitted diseases <coughs> like gonorrhea, syphilis, which also nowadays can be very easily treated. Human papilloma virus, if detected in time, can also be controlled or contained or even treated. Next please. Now, 630 million people are infected with this virus. Very common among the young adults, does not need penetrative sex to enter, to spread. But it can manifest as genital warts. Sometimes when we see genital warts, one, two, or multiple, we ignore it by saying, ah, doctor, you have to So, I am sorry to use the word unscrupulous. Unscrupulous doctors who examine these things, they ask, don't do it. Keep coming to me every week, and I'll give you medicines, and we'll treat it. But that's not being fair to the patients or the individuals coming to them. You treat them judiciously, tell them frankly, but a lot of the doctors I come across when I talk to them, it's a doctor, if you tell them frankly, you're having this, they won't come back to me. I said, well, that's the way you have put it across to them. It is how you can sell your own, your own ways, your own thought processes to the patient, what matters. Now, most of these infections get cleared on the, on the, uh, throughout the body on their own. Why? If the body's immune system 
is very strong, it can even take care of that. Now, this APV can be very easily identified by pap smear, and there are certain antibiotics that can even cure it. Not the routine ones, but there are specific ones for APV. Here, and most important, male partners, whether husband or any other partner, they also need to be treated. Otherwise, they may be the carrier, and even after treating, they will again pass it back to the lady partner. An untreated HPV can, can progress, not necessarily, but can progress into cervical cancer. Next, please. <clears throat> now, the question comes up, I mentioned earlier, I'm just this again being very repetitive. Do we do HPV testing versus PAP and IMVIA? As the replacement of PAPs, 50% to 95% compared to VIA. Why it's much cheaper, much cheaper to do VIA. A little more expensive to do a PAP, much more expensive to do HPV. So why should we not resort to PAP or VIA? Because of the sensitivity and specificity. PAP and VIA, <clears throat> in the reverse order, VIA can give you 50, 60, 70%. Sensitivity or specificity, perhaps a little more. APV DNA can give you anything between 95 to 98 percent positivity or negativity. These are the reasons why we prefer APV DNA. And my request over here is those of you who have a say in the state governments or your medical colleges or the hospital where you're working, please ask them to get, me, to get the APV DNA done on periodic basis. It's expensive. They can have a deal with the patients, deal in the sense, certain percentage they pay, certain percentage we are paying by organization. We are still trying very strongly with the government to get the HPV DNA going. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a little story about this, small one. <clears throat> when we started on the human papilloma virus here in Delhi, not only in Delhi, all over India, we have our colleagues all over. To get the ATP vaccine, it took us nearly five years. I remember five years ago, I had gone for a particular conference where the government sector was also there, and we started telling them about the ATP. That time, Corona was nowhere in the sight. ATP virus was not given the right thought process, and they said cervical cancer to hota hai, kitne saalon se hota hai. It doesn't make much of a difference. Now that is, sorry for saying so, mindset of the government. I'm ex government by myself, by the way. But I like to open up and say frankly what is what is frank and what's not. So it's like HPV virus took a long time to came and come, and now Serum Institute of India, based at Pune, they are going to release this vaccine very shortly in the market in India which is comparable to the ones abroad. Next, please. So, in case of collection of cell samples, which method do we use? Swabs, that's the one right on top. Right on top, they are the swab tubes. They are very sterilized. You take them out, <clears throat> put it over the cervix, and put it back in again. The other thing is the cervical brush, also known as cyto brush. This can also be used for APV DNA and also for the first one. And the last, which is a little crude, is the tampoon. The tampoon is what the ladies sometimes use during the menstruation period for adoption of the menstrual fluid. Next, please. Now comes a question which <clears throat> some companies have approached us in the Indian Cancer Society. Why not do self collection? Why? Because some of the foreign countries which I have visited and I met some of my Ghana colleagues over there, they say you can advise your educated pay, uh, patients to do self collection. Is it an option? So you can choose between self collection or clinical collection for the cervical uh, the screening test. So when some of the ladies came to me, I tried to explain to them through my Ghana colleges, ask them about self collection, show them this, tell them it can be done very, very easily. Majority of them ask the question, I written over here, can 
uh, human papillomal DNA testing is of self collected vaginal samples compared that with the physician collected cervical samples in cytology for cervical cancer screening in developing countries, mark the words. When I mentioned about going abroad, I was talking about the developed countries. Even over there, some things can go wrong. A, if it's clear to the lady concerned, she should be willing to accept it. Religion is taken into account. So today in India, my bank, my gynecology colleagues, whether ladies or gents, they are not in favor of it. Most of them, I would say, about nearly 80, 80, 85 percent say no. We are not advocating self collection because we are not certain whether they are doing it correctly or not. They may be picking up vaginal samples which will have no mucus, no mucus related to the cervix, or they will not be able to go deep enough to hit the cervix or around the cervix. So there are various reasons they give. So, in, uh, so personally, self connection is a question mark these days. But open for discussion. Next, please. Now, uh, coming to the vaccination schedule of the HPV vaccine. Ages 9 to 14, two doses, 0 and 6 months. I'm sure some of you are sitting over there waiting to tell me that the single dose has come. Yes, I know single dose has come. We'll come to that later. 15 to 45 years, three doses, 0, 1, and 6. And for immunocompromised persons, three times. Perhaps well, after 25 years, once every year, initially, before 25 years, they are married. The moment they are sexually active, they should go in every year. If found negative, then after 25 years, they must get the, get the subject once every year. Coming to the HPV testing, after 30 years, it's a must. Once every three years. Or, or I repeat the word or, or it could be a little earlier if some symptoms do creep up. Then in that case, you can't take this as a, as a Bible or a gospel that this is what has been mentioned. Next, please. So in India, what is the age of the HPV vaccine to be started? By the way, it has already started in India, not on a regular basis, and the vaccine is also not readily available in all the pharmacies or in the, all the hospitals. The schedule is given over here, 9 to 14 years, 2 dose HPV vaccine, 0 and 6 to 12 months. 15 to 26 years, 3 dose HPV, 0, 1 to 2 months and then 6 months. Now, please don't forget the mail. 21 to 26 years, vaccine offered the 3 dose regime. And 27 to 45 years, FDA has approved it but not routinely recommended unless advised by the treating or the assessing gynecologist. Next please. So this is to summarize it. The vaccine schedule, the vaccination given by age nine years, pre-puberty and before the onset of sexual curiosity or I use the word experimentation also. Again over here the question comes up. The parents you have to first get them to confidence. I go one step further. I always tell our volunteers, by the way, we've got about 70 volunteers in the Indian Cancer Society. All of them are cancer fighters or cancer survivors. So they understand what cancer can be all about. And I, I like to target them first. They go across, meet the principals of the schools and colleges, explain everything to them. And then come the next step, okay, having the parent teacher meeting, get the parents involved in it, and then of course the individuals themselves. That is how the success can be much, much better rather than just showing slides the way I'm showing it. And our workers are, uh, I want to use the word by work, workers, volunteers go across regularly to a number of schools and colleges, you know, to educate these things. Now, uh, currently, as, in, as on date, Two vaccines available by Valen of 16 and 18 uh, the virus and 40 weapons. Surveillance in India is costing to date about 3,299. This is about 42 USD per dose. 
while the other side got the guard sale, 2,835 uh, uh, American dollars per dose. Serum Institute of India developed an indigenous version called Servovac, Servovac. Government of India or the Ministry of Health will introduce this vaccine in the universal immunization program in India. In principle, they have agreed to it. And I came to know this through, C through FICCIPK or CII. And the cost of the dose will be just 200 rupees per dose. But if it goes into the universal immunization program in India, it will be free to the masses. Individually, they can pick it up for 200 rupees per dose. Thereafter, if you need any further advice, please conduct your gynecologist. Next, please. So, this is where after leaving the Navy, I'm a hospital planner and administrator. And I was wondering, wondering how come I know so much about oncology. Well, I decided to move into this particular field. And I've been working here for the last six years at the Cancer Detection Center, which is in Babur Road, near Bangali Market. You're most welcome to come and contact us. We have a head office also, and we do a number of other activities or not only detection. Yes, we don't treat them, but forgetting for detection itself is a big process. Next, please. Now, our dictum is the conquest of cancer is by choice, not chance. I hope you're getting this point. It's by choice and not full chance. And we have a number of these mobile units as well as Jagriti volunteers. You want to join us? You're most welcome to join us. Next, please, on the last slide. We are now <coughs> projecting this from the Academy of Hospital Administration. And uh, I am part of this academy since the time I met our late friend, Mr. Deepak Rai. Any questions? Please shoot. Meanwhile, we've got Professor Rajiv, I just moved in over here, just come and sat with me, Rajiv Jain. Earlier must have seen him over there on the <laughs> webinar, but he is now right here with me. Okay. Questions, if any, or comments, or comments. One at a time, please. Sir, my daughter is very Please introduce us. I'm Nidhi Girl. I am. I'm. I am. Sorry, Nidhi, that is not available. Sir, can you hear me? I can hear you now. But someone is interrupting in the big deal. Someone is interrupting in the big deal. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I'm 43. Sir, I'm 43 years old. I want to take cervical cancer vaccine for myself and my daughter. So uh, I saw your slide on uh, the vaccine. Uh, so I think for the 40 under 45 years of age, we have to take three vaccines that I understand. So uh, because I always heard the vaccines are not given after above 40, but I'm happy to know that even we can take it. Um, and for my daughter, she's 12 years old. Sir, I was told by a doctor there is a 10,000 rupees vaccine and to be given only once. Uh, so that's not what I saw in the slide. Okay. Now, Nidhi, when did this doctor So last month, maybe, uh, maybe one or two months back, she told me that I can come to her clinic for a ten thousand rupees vaccine, a single dose, to be given. Yeah, perfectly correct. So that will be correct. As on date, you see, there's a resounding resounding. Why? Why Is there another speaker here? The echo, the echo. Anyway, can you hear me, Nidhi? Yes, sir, I can hear you, sir. Okay, okay. So, so you can, you can. See. It's like this, like this. You know what medical, the medical, what we call, what we call visualization. If this private, private, telling you, telling you, telling you, she's right, she's right. That is, that is. He's examined, 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 he's
okay sir so so uh, my daughter has not yet entered into the puberty so i can wait up to 14 years right yeah you got to think of watch out watch out you see today i'm not mentioning what your daughter might think that is uh one has to be little careful careful as to as to what is this experiment experiment and that is why is why teacher teacher keep a watch on your children children and as and when these will be given the given the back to protect them from the future there is certainly no harm no harm we should try to try to hold on hold on let us start us start it and give it give don't wait don't wait too long yes sir yes sir thank you sir thank you anyone else will like add on or ask Hello, am I audible? Yes, 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 Doctor Gupta, please help. Uh, myself, Doctor Arijit Chatterjee, Principal, Faculty of Allied Health Science, Ikfa University, Tripura. First of all, thank you very much, sir, for your nice presentation. I have a thank query. Uh, is there any possibility of vaginal cancer uh, by HPV after complete removal of uterus with cervix? That is hysterectomy. Say the last word again. You are asking me whether a vaginal cancer can be caused by human papilloma virus. Yes, of course it can be caused. It's not only the cervix. You see, the viruses are of various strains. The ones which I mentioned are the four types. The two of two of them are very very specific. But vaginal uh, cancer can take place, although it is much much lesser. The chances because the epithelium of the vagina can can take care of a lot of harmful viruses and ever gave that to me thank you sir thanks for replying have a nice day ahead okay yeah any other question sir ladies don't be shy i am also a doctor Doctor Raji, Raji, can you got something to add? Yeah, only thing is now uh, what Serum Institute of India has done is uh, really path breaking. First of all, uh, the two vaccines that are available uh, from one from Europe, one from American continent, they uh, tackle uh, the type of viruses which are more prevalent in the Western world. While this vaccine, which is made by Serum Institute of India, is uh, on targeted for treatment uh, genotypes of of uh, hpv virus which are more prevalent in india that's that's point one second uh, introduction on a large scale that is pan india cases was the biggest constraint was uh, finances the costing was very high what serum institute of india has done it has given exclusive right to india to procure uh, entire production of the vaccine For the next five years, only then, from six year onwards, the vaccine will be allowed to be exported. So India would be number one country to be able to get hundred percent production of a vaccine which is uh, developed in India, product produced in India, and utilized in India. Uh, there are many advantages besides the cost of the vaccine or the uh, purchase cost of the vaccine. Uh, the 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 landscape available for introduction of this vaccine is available on the ground through the national uh, vaccination program and this uh, is going to be introduced sometime in july this year june or july this year in the national immunization program now second issue which uh, what has been well elaborated the the best time to get hpv vaccine is 9 to 13 years why it is so because that is the first time that uh, minarchy sets in and it's simple to understand the moment the minarchy sets in and we it's, it's a reality that uh, pre marital sex does occur in any situation or for that matter anywhere in the world so before first introduction of the virus is through male to female contact or through female to female contact or whatever may be the need, the, the sexual route of contact uh transmission may be there of hp virus one has to get vaccinated before that so earlier the better so the key 
message should be that this should be given at the earliest opportunity to all the girls at nine years of age. One should not wait for, you know, there was a question that well, 40 years, 30 years. No, that is not the, the strategy. And that can never be the strategy. Because for the ages who have had one sexual uh, uh, experience, the best is at the earliest is the screening. Screening is the only way. And in that, he mentioned there are low cost, low cost, and high cost methods, uh, which I feel uh, one should avail the facility, whatever facility is available for screening of infection with HPV virus. Sooner or later, if some lady is infected with HPV virus, she is likely to get, highly likely to get cervical cancer in the course of time. Now, when that occurs, is a million dollar question. Some women I have seen, uh, okay. I've got it in 10 years, some women have got it for 20, 25, 30 years. So uh, that's a, but the lethal and the challenging is that this, uh, when, when it occurs, the cancer, when the cervical cancer like it occurs, it is detected very late. Prim primary uh, stage of diagnosis in any situation has been a data member will publish the data again and again and again and again that stage 3 is our stage 2b is the earliest where it is uh, detected which is which is i think the, the tragedy the biggest tragedy in this situation and uh, indian cancer society has been doing urban service where they are trying to inculcate that more women should go for uh, screening and they should avail the facility of even biopsy or biopsy or bia or other technologies that are available even simple Visual inspection uh, in normal uh, gynecological examination when conflicts go is very rewarding. But for future girls, all the daughters that are born, they must get this vaccine at nine years of age. And government, uh, unfortunately, with our own technology, from July onwards, you will see the entire population of girls in India above nine years of age will receive this vaccine. This uh, yeah. that reminds me that HPV uh, Awareness Day is celebrated every year on fourth fourth of fourth uh, of March. Uh, actually, it is the third of of third course. March. It is the fourth of March. Uh, the primary reason is uh, HPV awareness will lead to screening of women, existing pool of women, especially above thirty years. So, any woman, if you have a wife. Do take her to a gynecologist, get her the benefit of uh, HPV you know, detection where screening can help. And uh, earliest detection uh, target should be the stage one or two if it is there. I think that, that should be the key message today. If thinking that vaccination will protect you, it's a bit. For existing girls above 13 years of age, Vaccination is not the solution. It is. It can never be the solution because they may have a false sense of security. They may get cervical cancer in spite of the vaccination. It will give some protection, but not comparable to the protection that girls uh, before nine years of age they get vaccination. They get. I think that that uh, uh, should be the key takeaway message today. I see you. Asiya Manchu, I saw your hand going up. Asiya, you still there? Okay. Um, <clears throat> what Dr. Jayadin mentioned, I'd just like to add, I have nothing against my gynecology colleagues. I love them. They teach me a lot. Even now, I'm in the process of learning everything. There are some gynecologists with the old school of thoughts who are not willing to accept these norms which we have been advocating over here. And I can't change their thought process. <laughs> it's up to them to understand. It's up to them to update their own knowledge. But I have come across a few gynecologists who say, no, 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 it's not advocated at all. So I am a little chari of such colleagues of mine. I just have discussions with them. I said, why do you say yes? Uh, why do you say no? They do not have sufficient answers for that. Anyway, 
Niti, I'm not trying to throw any question on your gynecologist. Certainly not. And uh, I'm sure she will be advocating it. So you should go ahead with it. I'll ask Asiya once more. Asiya, Asiya Madhu, anything in the point you had? If you're there still. Anyone else? No, if you're not there, then uh, Dr. Saroj, Cousin Saroj, would you like to wrap up? Yes, sir. Sir, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Can't hear you. Much needed than contemporary topic. I'm sure all of us who have heard it. I'm sure all of us who have heard it benefited okay. out of it, sir. On behalf of President Aha, I take this opportunity to thank you, sir, for this wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, sir. Jai Hind. Thank you, Colonel Patan. Yeah. You can speak up. Do you have any particular request of others?